Hey guys, this is KSP with Tape, and today you join me for episode 2 of Solar Civilization, my new series in which I make civilizations in the solar system. Ooh, I bet you didn't get that from the name. Anyway, so right now I'm launching another craft to space. I've just realized how wobbly it looks at, um, at one times time accelerated. It's like jittering around, but it's because it kind of veers off a little bit, because for some reason my spacecrafts always seem to veer off. But anyway, now we're into four times time accelerated because it's just another fairly standard launch. But this one is going into a higher orbit to get mystery goo science from there. But I'm going to quickly grab one, as you just saw there, from um, flying over Kerbin, because, you know, I need to get science. Um, this episode's actually got uh, five mission-type things in it. It's got two missions, and then five experimental-type spacecraft, I think. I don't know, I recorded this literally earlier today. I finished making episode one yesterday. And because this is basically how I play KSP, it wasn't like, oh, I've got to make another episode. Um, it was like, oh yeah, I'm just going to play some KSP. So I'm actually having to limit myself on how much KSP I play right now so I don't have too many episodes. Because I don't want to be putting them out too frequently because then people are like, eh, you're spamming me. But uh, the first one got a pretty good response. I think the first nine views it got has also got seven likes. So, you know, that's a pretty good ratio. Anyway, we've pushed the Apple Apps up to... Um, half a million meters. Uh, I'll just circularize-ish this, because it doesn't need to be perfectly circular. Circular. I, j um, I just screw, I'm skewing words, it's actually quite late. Um, anyway, so 10 science for that, that's good, but I can also take a crew report for an extra 5 science, and an EVA report of course, because, um, well, you know, get the science, get the, get the new parts, get this going, make bases places. Yeah, it rhymed make probably various things. Um, I have huge amounts of plans and over the last few days my mind has been exploding with ideas. Anyway, let's just go back to Kerbin right now because we don't need to be here for long because this was literally just to do a few experiments. I'm sure Bill Kerman will be a little upset that he doesn't get to spend longer in space, but he should be fine. Um, so yeah, and this will also be a good test of how well the heat shields work coming back from higher orbits, although I've as I am testing that, actually, in the last episode, I did a test of how we, uh, how heat shields react to it coming back, uh, spacecraft coming back slightly steeper than usual. Anyway, we are back into four times time accelerating. Um, the SRB is on the side, if you don't remember from the last episode, or if you didn't see it. Those are the abort system, for now, until I unlock bigger pods, and the actual abort system that's been added, which is really great, because I just like interesting parts. Anyway, we'll deploy the parachute so that I can land nicely on the grass. And this is going down incredibly fast because I always do four times time accelerate in the game, speed things along, and now four times time accelerate. Anyway, so do the math, that's 16 times time accelerate. But we have just landed on the grassland, so we'll take a, a few reports, uh, grab a surface sample, and then let's do another mission. This one is going to the poles. So I hope you like that uh, cross-fade cinematic thing. I've just been basically, um, the software I usually use for editing videos is completely just fucked up, so I'm using Movie Maker, and the great thing about Movie Maker is that it has loads of awesome, awesome little little uh, transfers, and uh, it's really tacky, and it's not very good software, but it's, it has fun transfers, fun little fades. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, it's it, Movie Maker. That's what I use now, and I've really got to get Vegas working again. I will. I will get Sony Vegas working. Anyway, this is going into a polar orbit, so I can take a few EVA reports from above the tundra and the ice caps because a lot of a, a lot of the time the tundra is overlooked because that's the bit that's just between the grasslands or the highlands or whatever and between the ice and that's actually a very important biome because well it's another biome and because it tells you things about science obviously in in the real world it tells you about i don't know what's going on um anyway so this first stage is about to burn out and we'll move on to the second stage and just warp up nearer the apple apps so that I can uh, burn more efficiently and not push my uh, orbit to too high. Um, I'm burning slightly north, northerly of my orbit, so that I pull that, um, so that it's actually a, basically a, um, a, like, zero degree orbit, because if you launch perfectly north, because of the rotation of the planet, it will be slightly sideways. Um, your orbit will be slightly inclined. Anyway, but now we're back into one times time accelerate, and I'm going to take a few EVA reports. That's not worth anything, because I've taken the ones over the highlands, so I'm going to quickly warp to the ice caps, because that's what this is about. 
and the uh, scientists have request that we uh, put the pod down in the uh, in the ice cap so that we can grab some um, some polar ice because that's they need their polar ice for their uh, rocket engines, obviously, because uh, that's how you make rocket engines, special ice engine. That'd be I was gonna say that, but it'd be interesting to see what that would even be. But anyway, uh, we're coming over the tundra now, uh, so I will need to take a report. Uh, Oh, nope, still over the ice caps, so uh, we'll just wait a little while until we're drifting above the tundra. I don't know what you'd really say. I guess you'd uh, in your report you'd talk about how it looks when you're looking down on it, I guess. Just like, it looks pretty icy. Or maybe, um, well, he doesn't have any equipment, so he can't take, like, uh, magnetos magnetosphere data. And that isn't in the game unless you install... Um, Kerbal Interstellar, that's the mod that's used. Scott Manley uses that. That's I do like his series, but I'm not going to use anything like that. One of the things I do want to keep is, like, I will be using parts like KW. Some of them will be slightly more efficient. Some of them will be slightly more powerful than stock parts. But they are still in the realms of current technology, because that's what I really like when... Because I want to be building loads of stuff. I want to be building carriers that aren't terrible, like that one, the ones I built in Elu Base. I want to be building maybe some kind of battle orientated craft because there will be there's a story not a story yet but i some kind of story will evolve out of this so that it's a little more interesting and uh yeah so i i, I want to use current tech current kind of technology to make it uh all a little cooler but anyway i need to grab the uh mystery go experiments it's in the dark i'm sorry about that it might be a little hard to see because youtube um, but it should be fine, yeah. But I haven't actually used that other mystery goo, so I'll use it for the high atmosphere science, because I haven't done that yet, I don't think. Yeah, see? Ten extra science. That's good. That's more stuff. Um, Bill Kerman looking very happy there. I think I have hired some more astronauts. Yeah, because Deb died. Um, he'll be back, I bet, because he's one of the commanders, so of course he'll be back. He was, uh, just before he uh, hit the ground in the abort failure test thing, he was like, I'll be back. That was the worst impression ever. I am so sorry. <laughs> anyway, I've got all the science from that, so um, I guess I can just put well put the electric charge from that battery into the uh, into the pod because we're going to be in the Arctic, so we want to keep the uh, astronaut warm, obviously, and then we can ditch that because who needs who who needs that? We don't. We, we don't need that stage now. It can burn up in the atmosphere or something, or hit the ground. Talking of hitting the ground, the Laddie satellite, the Lady Laddie, the um, lunar atmosphere dust and that, for completely forgotten what it stood for, but it was basically analyzing the very tenuous atmosphere on the moon. That recently hit the surface, and they'll find it at some point. Well, no, they won't find it. No one knows where it went down, but maybe one day we'll fi find it. Anyway, I've just actually fired the abort system. Um, just so it'll definitely put me down in the ice caps because I think I was about to overshoot so I just fired it just and it didn't spin me out because SAS kept it from spinning me out because that's what it's designed to do is push slightly to the side but luckily it didn't um, so that'll put us down a little better it'll bring us it has slowed us down but we're also coming in a much steeper now so it might be a little dangerous but we've proven that these pods are very uh, very you know resistant and this one itself has a built-in heat shield unlike other ones which I have to ditch. Um, so yeah. Uh, well, I, I actually had something to say, but I've completely forgotten what I was going to say. So, uh, But anyway, yeah, we're coming over, and maybe the sunrise looks nice. Um, I was watching, I actually, last night, I rewatched all of Macy Dean's singer. I couldn't sleep for some reason, so I was like, yeah, I'll watch all of Macy Dean's spirit wolf thing. And one of the things that struck me is because it's quite a while ago since he last uploaded that's very sad and stuff but um sad that he didn't upload it i don't know what's happened a lot of people a lot of speculation about what happened to him but he it's basically just uh, what i heard was life got in the way and he was just couldn't didn't have time for youtube anymore but anyway that's not the point i don't want to talk about that what i want to talk about is i was watching it and i was is an old version and Kerbin looked so crap like like now, people, some people are like, oh, some people use a beautifier mod, really like the beautifier mod. I don't think I'm going to use it in this because load times are already terrible. And I want it to be quite stock. And like last time I went to Juna, I was struck by how 
freaking amazing Juno looks by itself right now. I don't think it needs to be kitted out with anything. And Elu, yeah, that looks a bit tacky, but it's still... I want to do this without changing the framework of the game too much. You know, that's what I want the series to be. Anyway, we're coming down on the big white as opposed to the big black of space. But yeah, as I was saying, this does just look really good. I really like how the game looks now. It's just fantastic. And my settings are always on maximum, even when I'm using big ships, because I get surprisingly good frame rates, even with, like, that last Operation Black Hawk episode I did that brought the two big ships together. Pretty good frame rates. Don't know how, but uh, anyway. We're about to hit the ground now, and we have landed on the ice, and luckily it hasn't broken and we haven't fallen through. But anyway, we better satisfy the scientists by taking a crew report, an EVA report while well, uh, technically flying above Kerbin, uh, flying above the ice caps because I'm not on it, but I'm just kind of standing above it. But now I'll get one from on the ice caps and obviously a surface sample because we must understand our planet to go to other planets. That is why they want the ice. Yeah, that's why. Um, <laughs> anyway, I have been a little um resistant to do these sort of things because I have a little bit wanted to wait till I have planes but there's tons of stuff to do around Kerbin and I don't really want to fly to the ice caps. Anyway, we did unlock the materials bay so I'm going to quickly test that on the launch pad because we just need to test our, ma our stuff before we use it. But now we're going to test out uh, an idea for a plane. The first flight of a probe drone thing and it, it... okay, one second and it crashed. Good start. Anyway, we've tilted it up a little more so that it doesn't, so it can go upwards more than downwards. And it's flying all right, so I'm gonna tip forwards and try and gain some speed, but oh. Yeah, it didn't, didn't pull up, so that was screwed. Anyway, um, I put a reaction wheel on there now, so I, and moved the uh, couple of the wings a little bit back, so I, uh, the control surface is a little bit back, so I have more kind of authority over pitch. Um, so yeah, this actually flies pretty well. This is pretty dumb, I don't have many wings or anything yet, but I thought, eh, might as well work on a little rocket-powered drone, just because they're quite cool. And, um, yeah, and it's, it's always good to just start off making things like planes as early as you can, just so you have an exact idea of how to do it. Um, this is just completely experimental, but I would quite like to see if I can land it after doing a, just a bunch of spins. Anyway, um... So yeah, I think I'll try and uh, land it kind of off from the space center. I just need to pick a landing site that looks fairly flat. So some of the grass near the space center, but try not to hit the space center. Um, because we don't want to break things. Uh, that'd be bad. Anyway, um, so I'm just going to pull up, try to kill my forward uh, forwards velocity and kind of get a lot of time going downwards so that I have time to prepare. Um, yeah, so we get about we get up to about six kilometers. Our Apple Apps is five and a half kilometers. So you know that's uh, it's it's the highest flight of a plane yet, technically, because I haven't done any. Um, but yeah, I I do want to develop really good planes and SSTOs and things. But right now we're having some uh, and some problems with the uh, the aerodynamics of the spacecraft. It wants to flip around because Ferrum Aerospace says um, I am using Ferrum Aerospace just because it's I quite like it and. Uh, I don't have enough control authority to kind of pull us out, but I am trying to pull it out of the dive so I can maybe uh, just experimenting with the planes. That's what the scientists have commanded me to do. But then the yaw goes crazy and I have no yaw control, so we flip out. And I am trying to bring it under control, but um, it hasn't been designed brilliantly by the engineers. It was kind of slapped together in their spare time. So we go into a flat spin and um, there's not a huge amount we can do, so we hit the ground. Sad day. Anyway, now another test vehicle, a lander test, and a more mystery goo test. Not mystery goo, materials bay. Did I say mystery goo? I meant materials bay. So we'll take a quick flying above because we want to test out all our equipment, our landers, our probes, our because we haven't used too many probes, so now I'm using the hell out of them. So we're testing out the landers, the probes, the materials bay. We want to make sure all of it is perfectly working before we go to space because. Um, well, that's what you do in the real world, and I want this to be somewhat real-ish world, but way cooler with bases everywhere and occasional people having space shootouts. But uh, yeah, this lander works pretty well. I don't know where it would land, but now my favourite bit of this episode, I have called this Grasshopper. If you follow SpaceX, you will know what this is. This is a test to make a reusable rocket. I want to see if I can fly and land a main stage, because I don't want to be 
wasting money and next update money will be in the game so we want to be efficient um, in money so I want to be able to reuse rockets so I'm going to see if I can land a main stage so I've got the landing legs and the big decouplers to make kind of fixed landing legs um, so I'm going to take this off it's a little unstable because I only have a reaction wheel on it I do have mech jeb just for the vessel info and because j I don't usually use mech jeb for like landing and things but um it's good for vessel info and things and it's good for just lots of stuff anyway that was a quick 20 meter hop actually more like a 10 meter hop and it went quite well so the engineers have decided that they'll uh, take it a little higher to prove that it has some uh, some real kick in it and we have got a full complement of fuel which we will not be um, flying uh, damn it oh oh no I paused in the game don't I? oh yeah something was I don't know um, but yeah so we'll take a little higher flight and we do want to be re reusing rockets because SSDOs are great, but they don't get a huge amount to orbit, and if we can reuse a rocket, great, cheaper, better, and it's just kind of fun to land stuff. Anyway, um, that didn't go great, and it has destroyed itself on the launch pad, um, so we will have to work on that, and we will work on that even a little bit in the next episode, and there will be lots more gaming things and parts and experimenting with new things and trying to keep it interesting in the next episode. Um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, feel free to drop a like. That is awesome and helps me out more than you can possibly imagine. This has been Chaos Poop Tape. I'll see you next time.